Good morning, everybody. First, give an honor to God, who's the head of my life, uh, Pastor Rainey, pulpit associates, deacons, mothers, members of the frame. Uh, I'm just so excited about this moment to just see that I'm a churn in God. Amen. You know, somebody sees it. And, and to be able to get this opportunity to you in this world, Amen. Just, just to show God that I'm so happy with what you're doing in my life. Tony Raymond you see right now is not the Tony Raymond you met 18 years ago. Right? Right. It's not the Tony Raymond you met 30 years ago in the streets. It, 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 it's, it's, a, it's a new me, and I'm happy to be in this space right now. I don't know what God got for me. I'm not standing here proclaiming to be anything today. But I stand to say I love God, I honor God, and I love his people. And, and I just think we ought to give God a hand clap of praise for that. Just, just, to, just to know that I move from one situation to another. And I'm trusting in him, leading me, and guiding me. I'm putting on the right hand. I'm truly happy, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for everything you're doing. Praise God. Praise God. All right, today, um, our text, if you have your Bible, is going to come from 1 Samuel 17. Verses 45 through 47. 1 Samuel 17, verses 45 through 47. First Samuel 17, verse 45 through 47. And it reads, Then said David to the Philistine, Thou comest to me with a sword and with a spear, and with a shield. But I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied. This day will the Lord deliver thee into mine hand, and I will smite thee, and take thine head from thee. And I will give the carcasses of the host of the Philistines this day unto the fowls of the air, and to the wild beasts of the earth, that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. And all this assembly shall know that the Lord saveth not with sword and spear, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into our hands. May God add a blessing to read and hear the doers of his holy word. If, if I had to give this message a title today, I would entitle it, I was never the underdog. All right. All right. I was never the underdog. Most time when we hear this parable preached, it's always preached from a perspective that the, the, the underdog got a victory. That, that, the, that the little man can win. We, we, we all, we, we've heard this passage time and time and time again, and it always portrays David as this little helpless shepherd boy, right. and he somehow was able to defeat the giant. Yeah. Yeah. Right? But why can't we look at it as David was, was a competent and competent competitor? Right. He has something that Goliath and none of the Israelites had. David had the power of God in his heart. He had experienced things and witnessed things and, and, and taken accountability of things for God. And, and in this moment, he was exhibiting that God got me. I, I can fight, I can fight this battle. I can stand up to anything. I can I can make this a good situation. It's not about the reward. It's not about the king's daughter. It's not about all the things that's been promised. I'm standing up on the behalf of God. That, that's what David was doing in this moment. And if, and if you look at the text, you can see that David was confident. Goliath was spouting all type of nonsense and get, get up here, get down here, fight me now, come and fight me. But, but David was talking it right back. All right. I'm, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tear your flesh. I'm going to feed it to the beast. I'm, I'm going to give it to the fowls of the air. That's comforting. Because he know who he serves. And he know that he's going to see him through this battle. So, so David, to me, stood as a confident competitor, not this little helpless shepherd boy. But it all started with God. And that's what we got to do, church. We got to make sure that we're linked up with God. That, that we're trusting in him to, to fight our battles, to lead us to victory, to, to, to help us through the rough times, to help us through the bad situations. We've got to count on God. We've got to quit relying on our personal abilities and things that we think we have, and we got to give it all to God. Yeah. 
Without, without him, we're nothing. So often we just get it built up in our head and we, we've had a few little things that are happening in life that we think was special and that we made a, that we made a way. You didn't make the way, he made the way. Right? right? We got to get back to the root of things and know that it was all about God. And David truly believed that, that God can deliver me. God can get me through situations. People don't even know. David had fought the lion and the bear. Yes, he had. Right? He, he's out here with these sheep all day in the wilderness, going through the woods, handling whatever situations may arise for his father's flock. But, but David has fought the lion and the bear. Yes. He knows he's relied on God and called on him, and God delivered them to his hand. Yes. So he had an extra level of confidence that I don't think people even realize that he had. But, but, what, but as I've been reading and studying and teaching Sunday school and things of that nature, I'm, st I'm starting to, to, to realize that sometimes we let scripture and passages become too familiar. That's it. Right? That's it. We, we've heard this or we've heard that or we've heard a certain story. And the familiarity of the story makes us just kind of glaze over yeah. what's really in the word. Yeah. Right? There, there, there's so many times that we just take things on the surface. We, we, we hear it. We, we heard a preacher say it. We saw it on Facebook. We saw this. We saw that. And we just glaze over it. We, we, get the, we get the little piece that stuck, but we don't even look and care about the rest of the word. There's power in that word. Just because that one little thing stuck out and spoke something to you, there's more power in that word that, that could help you and move you to a better place in your life. Right? So, so we got to not let familiarity get us in a bad place where we just miss out on what's really in the word. So, so, so I'm finding that we dig a little deeper there's some extremely valuable information that can help us have a closer relationship with God. I'm, I'm, I'm going to just give you a few examples. Like, like Adam and Eve. When we hear that story, what's the first thing we think about? They ate the apple, and now we have sin. Right? There's, there's, but there's more to it. If, when you dig down and get a little deeper, there's more to it about how God came to see them every day. Okay. You know, okay. just, just all the things, how, how, how they hid from God and didn't want to yeah. see God. That there, there's more in that word that can give you something powerful that can help you in your life and your relationship with God. The story of Nicodemus. First thing we think about, that dude thought he had to go back in the womb a second time to be born again. Right? But there's more to it than that. Right? Je Jesus was saying some amazing things, trying to get him to understand how the Holy Spirit moves and how things work. But, but we just look at that top level of the word, and that's all we care. Think about Noah and the ark. First thing, they took two of each animal and it rained for 40 days and 40 nights. Right? That's what sticks. But there's more to it about how they navigated on the ship and, and when they was getting ready to hit land. All the things that go on in those passages are more valuable information than just what's on the surface. So, so I plead with you, please try to look deeper into the Word. Please quit taking just... The, the, the surface level of the word, that that's all it is. That's all you need to help you change your life. you got to get a little deeper and dig a little deeper, and I'm sure it'll take you places you never thought that you could go. Right. 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 I never thought I would, in a million years, that I would be in this position right now. Right? Not me. This, this wasn't in my destiny. This isn't something that I was striving for or, or chasing after. N never, never thought I could be anything for God. Ne never never really wanted to be anything for God. I just thought I was living my best life. All right. And doing the things that meant you were living and doing and having a good time and, and, get, and getting through. But there's more to it than that. Right. 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 We all have a purpose. We all have a destiny. We all have something unique that God has placed down inside of us. Mm -hmm. And it's time for us to start identifying our gifts. Yes, right? Is. As we identify, we got to cultivate it. We got to make it special. God has given all of us something special. And sometimes we throw at that by looking around, thinking about what everybody else yeah. has. Yeah. Why did God give them this? Why did God give them that? Don't worry about what it is. Worry about what you got. Yeah. There's something special inside of you. And you need to reach down and start figuring out what that is so you can be something for the king. Yeah. God's waiting on you, right? He's done his part. He's planted it in you. He's put it in you. He's made you special. And you got to believe that. You got to find that. And you got to move forward in that. So, so what I'm going to attempt to do today is... I just want to dig into this story a little bit deeper with you today. Right. I just want to point out a few more things that's in that scripture that's that, that, that's a little bit bigger than David slayed the, the, the giant. Yeah. yeah, that was very important. That was valuable. That, that, that's a that's a that's a good way to, to, to look at what happened in that moment. But there's a little something deeper that, that I want.
want to go over with you. I got a few points that I'm going to cross with you today and just try to expose some more things about this parable. So the first thing I want to talk about is being bigger than your fears. All the Israelites were terrified. None of them would dare to challenge Goliath. The rewards, the king's daughter, nothing could persuade them to fight Goliath. Twice a day, for 40 days, Goliath would challenge the Israelites demanding a one-on-one -on -one battle. Come down here and fight me. Send one of your men right now to come down here and fight me. David accepted the challenge, and David slayed the giant. Yeah. Th 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 there's been times in my life where I've had some, some fears come my way, and I've created giants right. in my life. It wasn't a giant, but I created yeah. the giant in my own. I, I remember a particular instance where I was asked to sing a song, and that particular day, I hadn't sung it in a while, and oh man, I'm, try, I'm trying to remember the words. I got my phone, I'm trying to listen to the video. I don't want to tuck myself away in the little kid's room, just trying to get these words together. And on, on, on that particular day, uh, Jalen was hanging out with me in the office, and he, he could see all this frustration on my face, and, and I'm sure he was wondering, what's going on with Deacon Tony, man? He's really acting weird today. And he kept, he would follow me every time I went somewhere, just checking on me, seeing what I was doing and what was going on or whatever. But I was just really exhibiting some, some, some crazy behavior that day. Because I was just, didn't want to sing the song, didn't understand why they asked me to sing the song. Want, want, want to tell somebody off. Why, why did you do this to me today? <laughs> and Jay, Jay was still watching me. He still watched me or whatever. I'm sure he's thinking like, man, what's going on? What, what, what can I do? He, he asked me for a piece of paper. I seen him over there scribbling something. He was drawing a picture. And then he, then he wrote some words. He said, uh, thank you, Lord, for working, waking us up this morning. Thank you for keeping us safe. And thank you for helping the people who are here. Thank you. I can't say thank you enough. Wow. I know you will help me for my trouble in, in, in bad times. Wow. And, and, you will, and you will make it okay. Wow. From the mouth of babe. He couldn't have been no more than seven or eight years old at the time, right? And he understood that Tony is in a bad situation. I really don't know what to do or how I can help, but I can call on God. Amen. Right? A, a child can lead the way. A child can understand. A child can see that all we got to do is call and rely on God, rely on Jesus, and he'll make everything okay. And he, and he passed he passed me the paper, right? And, and, and then he went a step further. <laughs> he wrote another little note at the top. Keep this through struggles. <laughs> it don't stop right here. It's going to be some more digging, right? It's going to be another time when you might need some help from God, or you might need a prayer from God, or you might need somebody to stand up for you. So keep this through the struggle. From the mouth of pain. But we make it so hard. We act like we can't withstand anything. We can't stand up to nothing. We can't fight our way through. We act like it's so difficult and complex. But a child can get it. Right? A child can understand how valuable God is in our life. What he can do to move us through situations that trouble us and put us in bad places. A child, y'all. It's not that difficult, man. Right? And I got through the song. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. And as I got through, I came back to the office and there he was standing at the door. <laughs> you did good, man. Yeah. <laughs> and, I, and, I, and I will never forget this moment. Th th that moment stays in my heart. It just reminds me of how simple it is to communicate with God. How simple it is to move problems out of your way. How simple it is to make your life better. If you just trust in him. He is our all in all. Without him, we're nothing. And the quicker we get this in our mind and understand what God can be our life, the better the better life is going to be. Yeah. We allow fears to make us become dismayed and lose our courage. Yeah. We, want, we, we run when we should stand and fight. We tuck away and hide instead of running towards the problem. It's time to put away the track shoes and stand up to our challenge. Amen. Amen. We, we got to quit running and we got to face that thing head on and everything is going to be okay. Amen. Next I want to talk about what matters. In, in life, you're bound to come across challenges. They may be small, medium, and maybe enormous challenges. The size of a challenge, problem, or obstacle is really irrelevant. 
The science doesn't determine what's possible for you. The only thing that determines what's possible for you is you. Your mindset, your beliefs, your faith. If size mattered, David would have never had the courage okay. to take on Goliath, okay. especially with just a staff, five stones, and a sling. David knew size doesn't matter. It's heart, it's courage, and commitment that matters. Mm -hmm. We need to apply the same principle and same level of thinking to our life and the challenges we're facing. Think bigger than the challenge. Be bigger than the obstacle and act as if it's impossible for you to fail. Yeah. Okay. Keep these words in your heart. Self-confidence conviction, and always believe in yourself. Yeah. We need to make sure we stay connected. More than anything, David trusted God. Yeah. He experienced things and knew that God was on his side. Mm -hmm. He understood God's power, and this bolstered his courage and confidence. But for the king, Saul, the Holy Spirit had departed from Saul. Yeah. Right? He had gotten in such a bad place that the Holy Spirit had yeah. departed from Saul. Yeah. That's where our courage comes from. Mm -hmm. That's where our confidence comes from. That's what moves us into new places and new things. But the Holy Spirit had departed from Saul. Not only was he exhibiting cowardice, he was having an anxiety attack. His men had recruited David to play music to hopefully help calm him down. Amen. When we first met Saul, he was labeled as handsome, a goodling, and from his shoulders upward, he was higher than any people. That meant Saul was a big dude. You almost as big as Goliath, but you sit there acting like a coward. Stand up and fight your battle, right? This is what God's given you. He's made you a head above all the other people, but you're sitting here like a coward. Stand up and fight for what's wrong. But, but due to not having the Holy Spirit, none of those attributes that I just described could even help him now. He was just as scared as all the other Israelites. Make sure you never lose your connection with God. We know that we can do all things through Christ. Right? The giants in our life, when giants enter our lives, we automatically start thinking, how do we deal with this problem? Mm -hmm. We end up battling with the terms of the problem. Mm -hmm. In this moment, Goliath established the rules of the battle, although Saul was the king. He laid out the who, the what, the when, the where, and the why. Mm -hmm. Right? He had set the tone for how this thing was going to go. They were now looking at the problem through Goliath's eyes. Mm -hmm. When we end up looking at the problem through the eyes of the problem, it's over. We're in some serious trouble when we let that dictate how things are going to go. You can't let the giant dictate the outcome of your situation, right? The threat. For 40 days, twice a day, they had to hear Goliath come out and issue his request for someone to fight. That's 80 times. Do the math. That the Israelites had to quiver and shake in their boots, boots, worrying about facing Goliath. You can see that giants don't go away easily. It takes strong faith to stand up to the threat. We actually make situations more complicated than they really need to be. That giant you may think you have to face may not be as difficult as you think. Use logical thinking and you will avoid catastrophic situations. Goliath told David, you think I'm my dog? Why are you waving sticks at me? David knew something was wrong yeah. then. Yeah. I just got a stab and he talking about I'm waving sticks. Goliath had to be led down into the valley by a shield bearer. Normally, the movies I've seen, the things I've seen about wars and battles, the enemy rushes in. But now this nine-foot giant is having to be led down into the valley by the hand. David knew something was wrong. Oh, yeah, I, bet. I bet that confidence started jumping up. I got him. Right. This joke can't even see. <laughs> I, I, he, can, he don't even know where I'm going to go and what I'm going to do. Come on. David had the edge. Yeah. That's why I say he was never the underdog. Yeah, he, he used his discernment to see that this is not as big a problem as it seems to be. Yeah. That's what we got to start doing. Yeah. We got to start looking at the situation yeah. and saying, this problem is not bigger than me. I can handle this. I can take this out. I can stand up to this, to this threat. <clears throat> Most of the problems you face don't even have a level of threat you place on them. We normally get more worked up about the situation than what really needs to be. Stay level-headed. Keep your composure, and it will always work out. Misplaced fear. Should we really be afraid of the things we fear in life? Should we really allow man to place fear in our heart to a point where we are crippled and almost paralyzed? The only fear we should have is fear of the Lord. Fear for God should show fear for God should show respect, awe, and reverence, not terror and turmoil. Fear of God will give you courage and it will give you hope. 
everything's not a conspiracy, and you don't have to fear what they fear, says Isaiah. Come on now. Even Jesus said, don't fear the one that can kill you. Yeah. Fear the one that can kill your body and soul yeah. and cast you in heaven. Fear the Lord, and it will bring you courage and help you withstand the giant. Yeah. Unbelief. When Saul finally heard of David's request to fight Goliath, he didn't hesitate to send him in. I don't want to go. <laughs> this little shepherd boy want to go. Let him go. He, we just need to send somebody down here to fight. But first he wanted to get him battle dressed. He tried to put his big old uniform on little old David. Mm -hmm. Right? David knew this wouldn't work. He knew he wouldn't be able to move. That's what people do. They clothe us in their unbelief. They clothe us in their unbelief. Just because you're scared and you can't depend on God, you don't believe in God, you put on the law. You put on the suit. I'm going to walk with what I got. And I'm going to face adversity how it comes because I believe and I trust in God. Right? We don't need all that extra unnecessary stuff. All we need is God. Faith and trust in Him will deliver us through any battle, through any situation. But you've got to believe. You've got to trust. You've got to know that God will make it okay. So, 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 that, so, so, so Saul didn't trust God to deliver Goliath into his hands. So he looked for better weapons. He looked for stronger men, quicker men. David knew that God was real and not a concept or a fairy tale. It's time for us to come to that same realization, yeah. church. God is real, and he will definitely fight our battle. Yeah. Right? Along this way, you're also going to get a little discouragement. There's going to be opposition when you walk with God. And don't be surprised where it comes from. It can come from your family, and it can come from your friends, right? In this moment, they question his motives. They ask David, why are you here, right? He, this, this guy is ready to take on the giant and do something none of you are willing to do, but you're asking me, why am I here? They will question your ability. They, they ask David, where and with whom did you leave the sheep? Right? Try, trying to question that he don't even have a sense and capability to know that he needs to put these sheep in good hands. That he would just walk and wander away and leave his responsibility. So they would even question your abilities. Right? The biggest letdown of all, they will question your heart. They told David, we know your presumption and your evil heart. All you're here for today, you just want to rile up the crowd and see a fight. Right? They don't know what's in here. Right? They can't see inside of here. Right? This belongs to me and this belongs to God. Right? These are the only two that has access to this heart. Right? Love and honor God and watch him deliver victory in your battle. Weapons will be formed, but they will not prosper. Amen? There's a bigger battle. Sometimes we end up fighting in the wrong arena. We allow the savage attacks from the enemy to force us to choose the wrong weapons for wartime. This is a spiritual battle, so we need spiritual weapons, not physical ones. We have to engage these battles on our knees. I hear so many people promote who they used to be as opposed to who they currently are in Christ. Right? You'll you, you hear them say things like, I had not always been saved. Catch me on the wrong day and you might get it. Yep. Right? Okay. I thought praise is what you do. <laughs> right? Right. Right. That's what you let come from your lips. Praise right. is what I do. But you ready to lift and lay the wrong kind of hands right. on somebody. Right. right? Why can't we promote the things of God? Why can't we just simply say, that joker tried me, but I went home and prayed for him. Amen. Yeah. Right? I called my prayer partner and we prayed all night trying to right. make this situation a better situation. Why can't we promote the things of God? Why don't we use the most powerful weapon that we have? Yeah. Prayer. Yeah. Right? A condition of our faith to withstand these attacks is our prayer life. Yeah. If you're having problems with attacks, you might want to check your prayer life. Right? Yeah. If the attacks you have concern, okay. if, if, if the attacks that you are encountering have cornered you, and you can't go right, and you can't go left, if there's some reason you can't push forward, Please don't go back. Right. 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 Don't go back to them old things, them old ways, them old habits. How you thought you handled it at another time. Right? It didn't work for you then. Right. So what makes you think it's gonna work for you now? 
please don't go back because you might not be able to come back. Right? Don't get stuck in a place that, that never merited you anything in life. No success, no happiness, no joy. Don't get stuck in them old ways. Keep your hand in God's hand. And he'll always lead you and guide you in the right place. Right? What did Paul say? For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of the world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Weather that storm and honor God. Okay? And we gotta have kingdom vision. Huh? We gotta have kingdom vision. We got to change our perspective. We got to let go of our personal perspective and honor God. Everything's about me. Me, 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 me. Right? If it don't line up, if it don't set up, if it don't look like in some way, shape, form, or fashion, it's going to do something for me. I don't want any part of it. Right. Right? You got to convert to kingdom vision. Right? David realized Goliath wasn't coming against their army, but he was coming against God. And David said, if he's fighting my God, he don't stand a chance. Yeah. Right? My God will destroy him. Yeah. Right? That's what David knows for himself, that God is everything. God is powerful. God will move. God will make a way. God will do all the things that he said he would. But we can't get this in our mind. Right? The way David felt kingdom vision. Yeah. Right? David went further to say, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? Oh, Which means, who is this man that's out of covenant relationship yes, with God? Amen. Right? Amen. Have you checked yourself lately? Come on. Right. Do you know where you are in God? Yeah. My God. Right? Do you, do you realize how you could really be dishonoring and defiling and, and coming against God with your ways, your actions? Your thoughts. Right? Yeah. And we don't even see it. We just walk around like everything's everything, right? But you got a problem in your life. Right? You got to make sure that you stay in touch and in tune with God and you keep kingdom vision. Right? Quit trying to control the narrative. Let go and let God. He's able. Right? He's done it over and over again. He's able. Let go and let God. Yeah. Right? Man, I know, I know I've covered a lot. It's been about 10 points. But uh, can't you see how we just glaze over the word? Yeah. Right? David hit him in the center of his head and he fell and I ran down and cut his head off. That's the story of David and Goliath. Right? It's way more. Right? It's so much more, but the biggest and best thing about it, it can help you. Right. Yeah. Right? right? It can change you. It can move you into a realm that you don't even realize that you can be in. That's right. right? That's right. Trust in God. Yeah. Let him have his way. Mm -hmm. Right? I've been going through a personal situation where my job shut down in 2019. I tried another job. It didn't quite work. Gave him my all. It just didn't fit me. Got another job. UPS. Thought it was the greatest thing in the world. All these money promises, all these things he purchased. I lost that job in two weeks. Right? I'm, I'm questioning God. God, what, what you doing? I, I, I mean, I, I know you're trying to say something to me. I hear you and I'm listening. But what, but what are you doing, Lord? Why don't you give me all of these blessings, all of these great things, and then just take them away? God, you've closed two doors in my face. I don't, I don't understand why. Right? But I, but I had had a little side hustle that I had been doing over the years. And, you know, I worked in management and things of that nature. And in that moment, I'm, I'm sitting at home having my pity party. I mean, I'm shedding a few tears, just not understanding what's going on in life. How am I going to take care of my family? How, how am I going to be the man that God has supposedly called me to be? And I can't even do these simple, I can't even keep a job. Right? I was almost, I was almost in depression. just started to talk to him and get an even closer relationship to understand that he was right there with me trying to tell me, my brother, you don't even need all that. I got something better for you. Yeah. Right? Yeah. 
put some energy in that thing that you call a side hustle and make that your business. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You got the skills, you got the training, you got the knowledge, you got the know-how. Move into this new space. Yeah. This is what I have to do. Amen. Yeah. But I'm still fighting. I'm still fighting. I went and applied for another job. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, man, I promise to you, man. You, man, uh -huh. we was gonna hire you last time, but man, we, we got you this time. Just all, all you really gotta do is fill out the application. Job is yours. Yeah. I'm, I'm stoked. I'm over the moon. I'm uh -huh. lost out in sleep. Yeah. Yeah. Mr. Raymond, this time we decided not to go in that direction. So, da -da 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 -da, right? But, but, but here I am again, questioning God, doubting God, trying to move the narrative. Move into something that I think I deserve. Right. Want that title that I used to have. Right. The, the things that I thought was important. I don't even realize what God is doing for me. That's right. Right. Ooh, right. In this new situation, I spent time with my family. Yeah. Come on now. Right. Come on. I neglected them for so long. Yeah. Right. I was up at five in the morning, then get home at eight, nine, ten o'clock right. at night. Right. When I did get home, I chunked them off. Uh, I got to eat. I got to shower. I got to get up and do this all over again in the morning. Right. <laughs> Go to bed with my wife. Come on. I wake up with my wife. Amen. Right? Amen. I'm around the house doing the course of the day. Right? I get to crack the sin of joke. I see, I get to see the beautiful smile. I get to go through things I never even thought that I could have in life because now I'm trusting God. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It, it's all about him now. Hallelujah. Right? Because he's he just like David, he's shown me that he got me. And he's proven it over and over and time and time again. And I'm at the point now where I believe. Amen. Right? I'll never doubt him again. I'll never misplace my trust Woo. in him. God is my all in all. He is my everything. I know he's going to win my battle. I know he's going to slay my time. I know he's going to put me in the best position that I need to be. And Lord, I trust you with it all. God, God, I'll go to the end of the earth for you, God. You tell me to go and I'll go, God. Even if I have to go by myself. I trust you, Lord. I love you, Lord. It's all about you. I'll never doubt you again, Father God. I'm so grateful for all that you're doing, all that you're giving, all that you're showing me in this moment. And I, and I promise to trust you, Lord. I, I, I solicit each and every one of you to get that same type of trust. To get that same type of commitment with him. You ain't no punk because you love God. You ain't, you, ain't no, you ain't no weak vessel because you, you might get on your knees and cry That's it. and call out to That's the Lord to help you and move you through your situation. Right? Don't, don't feel like you're less than anything or anybody. Right? You got the greatest power at the, at the touch of your hand by trusting in God. Right? Yeah. You know what he can do. He moves mountains. Right? He breaks chains. Right? He's that bridge over troubled water. Right? All you gotta do is trust him. Yeah. Right? All you gotta do is move out the way. Yeah. You're in the way. God's trying to move you to the next level, and you're in the way. Right? Amen. Check yourself. Let God. Right? He wants to do it for you. Right? He's standing at the doorstep knocking. Amen. Let him in. Amen. Right? I guarantee you, your life will be changed forever. Yeah. You'll experience things you never thought you could experience in life just by giving it over to God. Yeah. I ain't talking about giving him a little piece. I'm talking about giving him an all. Yeah. You've got to surrender all and let him have it. Yeah. Right? I promise you, yeah. life will never be the same. Yeah. In closing, I just want to remind you that the giants are going to continue to come. Yes, they are. Satan will use distractions and everything at his disposal to keep us off our game. As we face these giants, just remember, never be the underdog. Keep the right perspective and always rise up in faith. Right? See the battle for what it is. It's spiritual warfare. Right? See people for who they are. Everybody's not the enemy or a conspirator. See God for who and what he is. David bragged on God because he had deliverance. He knew what he was capable of and his capability. We also want him to be a deliverer that will work through a person of faith. Right? Trust God. Believe God. Honor God in everything that you do. And I, will, and I know we're going to see lives change. I 
know we're going to see breakthrough. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. I, it, it, it's all in our destiny. Yeah. But we've got to be dependent on God. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That's all I have. Thank you. Will you allow him to come in? Will there be another one? Someone else? 